So, Newcastle, man. man, watching Newcastle though, it's just amazing, you know? Like, they just play amazing football, you know? And, you know, we heard about, you know, the Saudi, they took over the team and all that. We were thinking Newcastle, you know, they were gonna, you know, buy mad players because they have mad money now, you know, mad oil money. But, you know, Newcastle, they didn't buy that much players, but. I mean, they didn't use that much money. They bought a lot of players, but they didn't use that much money. And new coach, too. And then they've just been balling. So let's just see. Newcastle just getting it started. Newcastle United have been having an unreal season. One of the most consistent teams in the league and continually showing why that is the case. Sitting on the brink of Champions League football, they Champions are having the best Newcastle since the Shearer days. Ooh. It's quite a sight. It's been about a year and a half since the takeover and only three transfer windows have taken place. I made a video discussing the timeline of the takeover and the yeah, potential ramifications that. that could arise from it at the time. And we were already seeing its effect in full swing back then. The club swapped hands in late 2021 and were pretty down bad at the time. If you guys need reminding of their form table for both halves of the 21-22 season, Here's a quick recap. This is how the okay. table looked after 19 matches. Newcastle sitting with 11 Damn. points in 19th place, which is, well, it's, it's not great. But this is where it gets interesting. Here is how things would have looked if the season began after match day 19. Oh, wow. 38 points, third place almost quadrupling their points tally and turning everything decent, around. Decent. Anyone want to take a guess as to when the takeover was finished? Just before the halfway point of this season. Their eventual 11th place finish was probably highly deceiving to anyone that just tuned in at the end to see how the final table looked. But after this current season, there can be no doubt that these guys mean business. In this video, we're going to briefly talk about the Magpies' Damn, a strong face. rise over the past year and a bit, about what they've done right from the outside looking in, and about what they're probably going to do going forward too. With that being said, what's going on over at St. James's Park? Yo, yeah, what is going on everyone? Really hope you're all doing well. I'm Tinasha and welcome back See to another video. This video ever was ever originally mm. supposed to be a mm. reaction video to the Newcastle 6-1 match a while back. But I had a lot more thoughts that I wanted to put out and a lot more information has come out since then. The crux of the video would have been the fact that Newcastle beat them so bad that Spurs couldn't in good conscience let their fans pay to watch them play that match. Yeah, yeah man. The bars bars knew that. I know I was in the camp do, but... That A2 was a terrible night, terrible night. I was getting clowned. Every Barca film was getting clowned on social media. I am not going to open social media after that. That A2, bruh. Terrible. It's noble of them, I can't lie. But uh, I really do hope they set up recurring payments, though. It's what five goals in 20 minutes does to a team, I guess. It's still better than 7 0, though. Yeah. Which is why. That's why I saw United fans talking about Spurs this, Spurs that. Like, Bro, you can see this six and a half. Come on. Let's be serious here. Say out loud. I can't remember the last time that a team went on, ahead like, and come sacked on. a caretaker manager only four games into their time in office. What a time. To Ooh. Ooh. The terrible record be alive. We could go on all day talking about Tottenham Hotspur and the many problems that they continue to face this season as Harry Kane needs to leave, boy. He's 31. Did that he needs some like trophies. A month ago, so he needs some trophies. We gotta move on. Newcastle, on the other hand, have followed this victory up with 4-1 and 3-1 wins against Everton and Southampton, respectively. Both teams are sitting at the bottom at the moment, but that doesn't discount their impressive form. Eight wins in their last nine at the time of recording, including mm. a 2-0 win against Man. Wolves, Nottingham, Man United, no, easy, yeah, 5-1, Brentford, West Ham, Aston Villa, they lost, okay, Newcastle, uh, Tottenham, Everton, Southampton, okay. And United, least amount of goals conceded in the Premier League this season, okay. a major domestic final appearance for the first time since okay. 1999, consistently in the top four over the course of the season, and on the brink of making their first Champions League appearance since 2003. Newcastle's current situation on paper fully justifies the buzz around them lately. Since coming in only a month after the takeover, Eddie Howe has worked wonders. Fun fact, at the time of recording, he's the only Englishman managing a team in the top half of the table. I mean, 
Ryan Mason is technically the Spurs manager, at least until the end of the season, but uh, they're, they're not exactly playing like a, a top half of the table team, if we're all being honest. Spurs you could me. not live with your own failure. I don't know. Where did that bring you? Back to me. The fact that he's convinced the new owners to stick with him instead of going for a flashy European caliber proven coach is an achievement in itself. I mean, they did reportedly approach Emery before him, but that was almost two years ago. So long ago, it basically didn't even happen. That's how time works, right? Apart from the manager, a big part of praise for Newcastle has to be their recruitment. In the three windows that have taken place. See, see how much they spent in three windows, okay? A year and a half, should be here, 12 million, okay. Well, I don't know who that is. Guimar is okay. Guimaris, Guimaris. I think that's what they call him, Guimaris. He's been, he's been playing good. Dan Burns, center back, playing good. Target, I don't know who that is. Pope, the goalkeeper, pretty good. Botman, another center back, pretty good. He's like a baller. High spending, but you know, worth it, worth it. Striker, a yeah, striker left, left one, I think. Pretty good. Anthony Gordon, I, I saw he was playing the other game. Uh, he's, he's decent. Place since the takeover, they've spent over 260 million pounds on players, a large sum, with the largest being for Swedish striker Alexander Isak. A 63 million pound fee for the 23 year old raised a couple of eyebrows when the deal went through, but he's been incredibly solid so far. He was unlucky with an injury at the beginning of the season, but Regardless, he's managed 10 goals in 17 games. His second goal against Spurs was a real thing of beauty that solidified the unity in this team. The interplay between Trippier, Longstaff, Murphy and Isak was super slick, making the Spurs players look like training cones in the process. Also, his dribble before his assist oh, for Murphy's goal versus Everton was... That was nasty. Kieran Trippier is a signing that can't be praised enough. The first marquee signing since the takeover and unless we all have selective memory, calls that he was only going for the money were rife at the time. The calls aren't so loud now though. The La Liga champion has been a much needed leader and cool head. Bruno Guimaraes came later for 40 years since Guimaraes become another very Guimaraes. important member. Now the investment has been very large at Newcastle over the past year or so, I think we can all agree on that. But we can't overlook yeah. the fact that players like Joe Linton, who was once a laughing stalk of a striker, is now performing at levels none of us expected him to in the midfield. 21-22 Newcastle player of the year, by the way. You know, I guess maybe he's not actually the best example, seeing as he was bought for about 40 million pounds at the time and broke Newcastle's transfer record. So hmm. maybe I guess now he's just performing to the level that he was supposed to be performing okay. to all this time, just Probably. in a different role. He's still pretty impressive though, don't lie. Sean Longstaff, Jacob Murphy, Fabian Schär, Jack Grealish's least favorite player, Miguel Almiron, and many more show that the core of the squad have been around the whole time. The levels all round have just been exponentially increased. And more importantly, the attitudes of the players that are already there, as well as the players that are coming in, have just all been stellar. Team players all round. This is a unit, and we can expect many more additions in the very near future. Now, all of that is incredibly admirable. And if we're to believe the words of co-owner Amanda Stavely, it's all going according to plan too. Newcastle was bought by the current consortium for about 305 million pounds, which is a lot of money, but it's also an amount that becomes increasingly more significant when you realize that they've almost already spent that amount of money on player transfers alone. Sure, they have deep pockets, but- They only spent 300 million on Newcastle? You can also tell Damn. that they're not here to buy the club and then just pump as much money as they can out of it. This is a project that they want to build from the ground up. And if you take a look at where they were when they bought the club versus where they are right now, I say they're well on their way. In a panel discussion at the Financial Times Business of Football Summit in March this year, Stavely noted that the board has a 15-year project in place. A project Damn. that they believe will lead them towards winning everything under the sun in that Premier League? Champions League. Newcastle Newcastle win the Champions League maybe next season. Ooh. Ooh. Same. A time period. But they're not gonna well, get there to expand their brand. So we'll come back next like season. The first we'll wait on shouldn't it. be too hard. It's wait on it. not unrealistic to say that their performances in the league have already won them a couple of fans. Keep that up consistently 
who knows where they could be. Spurs haven't even won anything in years, but the amount of fans that I saw pop up during the Poch era was, was pretty impressive. Good football will do that. Newcastle currently have film crews following them around, creating a documentary for Amazon. Now, I remember having oh, a wow. newfound respect for Sunderland when their Sunderland Till I Die documentary came out. Who's to say that this will be all that different? It's worth noting that Stavely has openly stated that this doc will cover more the commercial side of things than the football side I of things. I need that Barca documentary to keep on going. I watched all episodes already. Man. Messi. Messi, come back. We miss you. We so miss you. We're not necessarily going to get an all or nothing type deal here. But at the same time, this behind the scenes kind of look, it sounds like it'll be quite unique to things that clubs have given us access to in the past. So I guess we all have that to look forward to. A plan to potentially emulate the multi-club system that Manchester City has adopted has also been discussed. Stavely also noted that FFP was at the front of the minds of Newcastle's higher-ups for every key decision. Despite the very deep pockets that Newcastle have, they are restricted when it comes to what they can spend, seeing as financial mm. fair play regulations are based on what the club brings financial in. Fair play, though, like, 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 it's kind of like, like tricky, though. Because you see clubs like Madrid spending like, or Chelsea, Chelsea spending like 600 in the transfer window. 600 mil. Where is that fair play there? Or Madrid. Madrid don't spend, they didn't spend that much, but like, when they spend, they spend. For real. For like Barca, when they spend, they spend. So financial fair play is like, nuts a little bit. And bro, I seen. A lot of Premier League teams spent more than La Liga teams in the winter. Like, La Liga teams did not spend at all. Premier League, they blew it. Rather than what the owners have in their wallets, at least that's uh, that's how it's supposed to work. I was looking at the Deloitte Money League 2023 report when putting this trash in an annual profile of the highest revenue generating football clubs on the planet. You saw the success in 20th. Which is unbelievably impressive. Okay, you see, Man City. When I say Man City, Madrid, oh, it's revenue, okay? Man City, top Madrid. Revenue? Okay. Liverpool revenue. But the thing about Liverpool, this much revenue and they still couldn't buy Bellingham. Okay. Man United, PSG, Bayern, and then Barca, Chelsea, Tottenham, Arsenal, Juventus, Atletico, Borussia Dortmund, Milan, West Ham. What? Okay. AC Milan, Leicester, Leeds, Everton. Newcastle on its own. If we zoom a little closer, we'll see that they sit in 11th in terms of the English clubs on this list. Charts like this really showcase the financial power of the EPL. Take note that a team's Facts. finishing position isn't necessarily reflected on this list. Leeds sit above Newcastle and Everton, yet they finished 17th last year. Man United finished in 6th, yet they are the third English team here. But with more money coming in due to a higher finishing position, a UCL spot, and the fact that they'll be able to negotiate bigger sponsorship deals, who knows what they can achieve. Many believe this club is overachieving right now, which is completely fair. We'll have to see more on a consistent basis to kind of see if this is a flash in the pan or not, right? But That's crazy though. Premier League top four for Champions League? It's about to go crazy. You got mad teams. You got Newcastle, Brighton, Man United, Man City, Liverpool. I'm not gonna say Chelsea, they're a rele relegation club now. Um, Tottenham, I guess. Who am I missing? Arsenal. That's already seven teams fighting for a top four. It's impressive. But if this is truly their level, this early into the plan, we're in danger. On the subject of sponsorships though, even though it looks like things are on the up, that is that is quite a tricky minefield to negotiate for them right now. Good old Mike Ashley and his crew left very many parting gifts for the incoming office. We inherited very, very difficult contracts, including from Fun88. We inherited contracts that were six years in length Damn. and were very much one way. 
We were limited by the way we could drive up commercial revenues. It was a really difficult time. Stavely said this in the same FT panel I mentioned earlier. All of this is to say that there is still a lot of also, work to be done, Mike, so we can expect many, and then many look. more changes. Despite their excellent position at the moment and the way they've been playing, the question of whether Newcastle is, is back in Champions on. League it's crazy. Team it's crazy. has been crazy technology. pretty frequently crazy. as of late. Now, this is increasingly concerning due to the intensity of their play. When these guys take to the pitch, they you hear that plane? leave everything there. And while I agree with the, the sentiment that they're not yeah. ready for UCL, I honestly don't think no it decency, matters man. all too much no at this decency. current stage. Is their squad depth expansive enough to allow them to compete on every single front? Mm. Probably not. No. Do they have the quality, nerve, and experience to go far in Europe? Like I said, I'm expecting a busy summer mm. from them, but all the same, Probably not. Does everyone watching this expect them to level up from here? Be honest of and course. consider the caliber of the old god. Right, I know what you're thinking. Probably not. The expectations what? from Newcastle at this very moment and up. probably for the next couple of seasons will be nowhere near that of Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Spurs, etc. and etc. I never thought in my career, in my lifetime, I'd be in a position to try to get Newcastle into the Champions League. I'd imagine that this sentiment of Sean Longstaff is shared by everyone that was around at the club before October 2021. They've already gone beyond the general consensus and they obviously have ambitions to go further, but I rate, at the moment, they're more concerned with keeping it up. Now I know that every situation is different and every club has their own circumstances, but just to take the cautionary route, I think right now is probably a good time to remind everyone about Leicester City and Everton, the last two teams to finish in the top four outside of the traditional Big Six. Traditional. Modern Big Six? I don't know, man. But well, Newcastle were playing in Europa, it's pretty good. And even though they made it to the quarterfinals of the Champions League the next year, they finished in 12th. Everton came in 4th in 2005 and finished 11th the next year. Again, different Damn. circumstances, but still worth taking a look at, right? But like, Technically, the thing about is... small clubs and finishing high, it's usually the players that help them finish high, they get sold, then the team drops, you know? Like Brighton, I think Brighton, they're gonna lose a lot of good players, so you have to see how they come back from that, to be honest. McAllister is leaving, Caicedo might leave, Matoma might leave, I think Ferguson, he extended his contract. But you know, you gotta see. Like, this is all possible for Newcastle next year. It is extreme, of course, but you gotta look at both sides, right? The potential positives and the potential negatives. However, given what these new owners have shown us so far, I'm not sure that this will be allowed to happen. Then again, only time will tell. I think even Newcastle, you know, is getting Europa League, like, this is amazing for them, you know? But, you know, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. And, you know, congrats to Barca for winning the La Liga, you know? Hold on. Barcelona, we'll be talking, but no new mic. Hopefully, corner sounds good, and I can just upload this. Boom, we'll just see. We out. Peace.